Hello, my name's Maddie. Welcome to my storyland. When Robert requested the poem Maud Muller by John Greenleaf Whittier, my response was an immediate and unequivocal absolutely. Well, the response was immediate. The reading itself has taken a little while longer, and for that you have my apologies. Thanks for the request, John. I only hope it was worth the wait. Greenleaf was a 19th century American poet and ardent abolitionist, who also happened to be one of the founding contributors to the American magazine The Atlantic. Greenleaf is often named as one of the New England Fireside Poets, an informal association whose members included Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and Oliver Wendell Holmes. While his most famous artistic work is probably his narrative poem Snowbound, published in 1866, it is his poem Maud Muller, published some ten years earlier, that contains his most famous and most often quoted lines. For all sad words of tongue or pen, the saddest are these it might have been. The poem is rather melancholic, and while it does end on a hopeful note, the main themes of the poem are choice and its ensuing regret. And today it is my pleasure to read it to you. Are you ready? Then let's begin. Maud Muller by John Greenleaf Whittier Maud Muller, on a summer's day, raked the meadows sweet with hay. Beneath her torn hat glowed the wealth of simple beauty and rustic health. Singing she wrought, and her merry glee the mockbird echoed from his tree. But when she glanced to the far-off town, white from its hill-slope looking down, the sweet song died, and a vague unrest and a nameless longing filled her breast, a wish that she hardly dared to own for something better than she had known. The judge rode slowly down the lane, smoothing his horse's chestnut mane. He drew his bridle in the shade of the apple-trees to greet the maid, and ask a draught from the spring that flowed through the meadow across the road. She stooped where the cool spring bubbled up, and filled for him her small tin cup, and blushed as she gave it, looking down on her feet so bare, and her tattered gown. Thanks, said the judge, a sweeter draught from a fairer hand was never quaffed. He spoke of the grass, and flowers, and trees, of the singing birds, and humming bees, then talked of the haying, and wondered whether the cloud in the west would bring foul weather. And Maud forgot her briar-torn gown, and her graceful ankles, bare and brown, and listened while a pleasant surprise looked from her long-lashed hazel eyes. At last, like one who for delay seeks a vain excuse, he rode away. Maud Mala looked and sighed, Ah, me, that I, the judge's bride might be. He would dress me up in silks so fine, and praise and toast me at his wine. My father should wear a broadcloth coat, my brother should sail a painted boat. I'd dress my mother so grand and gay, and the baby should have a new toy each day, and I'd feed the hungry and clothe the poor, and all should bless me who left our door. The judge looked back as he climbed the hill, and saw Maud Muller standing still, a form more fair, a face more sweet, ne'er hath it been my lot to meet, and her modest answer and graceful air show her wise and good as she is fair. Would she were mine, and I to-day, like her, a harvester of hay, no doubtful balance of rights and wrongs, no weary lawyers with endless tongues, but low of cattle, and song of birds, and health, and quiet, and loving words. But he thought of his sisters, proud and cold, and his mother, vain of her rank, and gold. So closing his heart, the judge rode on, and Maud was left in the field alone. But the lawyers smiled that afternoon, when he hummed in court an old love tune, and the young girl mused beside the well, till the rain on the unraked clover fell. He wedded a wife of richest dower, who lived for fashion, 
as he for power. Yet oft, in his marble hearth's bright glow, he watched a picture come and go, and sweet Maud Muller's hazel eyes looked out in their innocent surprise. Oft, when the wine in his glass was red, he longed for the wayside well instead, and closed his eyes on his garnished rooms to dream of meadows and clover blooms. And the proud man sighed with a secret pain, Ah, that I were free again, free as when I rode that day where the barefoot maiden raked her hay. She wedded a man unlearned and poor, and many children played round her door, but care and sorrow and childbirth pain left their traces on heart and brain, and oft, when the summer sun shone hot on the new-mown hay in the meadow lot, and she heard the little spring brook fall over the roadside through the wall, in the shade of the apple tree again she saw a rider draw his rein, and gazing down with timid grace she felt his pleased eyes read her face. Sometimes her narrow kitchen walls stretched away into stately halls, the weary wheel to a spinet turned, the tallow candle an astral burned. And for him who sat by the chimney lug, dozing and grumbling o'er pipe and mug, a manly form at her side she saw, and joy was duty and love was law. Then she took up her burden of life again, saying only, it might have been. Alas for maiden, alas for judge, for rich repiner and household drudge, God pity them both and pity us all, who vainly the dreams of youth recall, for all sad words of tongue or pen, the saddest are these, it might have been. Ah well, for us all some sweet hope lies, deeply buried from human eyes, and in the hereafter angels may roll the stone from its grave away. And with that I bid you farewell. I hope you enjoyed the poem. Perhaps I'll see you again. I certainly hope so. Until then. Hello, Maddie here. Thanks for watching me read stuff. There are lots more videos of me reading stuff over on my channel, and if there's other stuff you'd really like me to read, just let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons, and I upload new videos all the time, so maybe hit the bell icon too, so you can get notified when new stuff comes out. Thanks again for watching, and see you next time.